Welcome to the Cal Fire Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Terrence, and with me is my co-host, Jason, calling in for the back cave in Indianapolis. Jason, now you my good man. I'm pretty good, man. Hey, we had a pretty good time before we started this. I think the orange shirts are kind of making you in a better mood, frankly. That's just my personal opinion. But with that being said, we have three great topics this week, as always, and I'm definitely ready to get into it. Okay. Thank you for listening. This is episode 63 of the Cal Park Bros podcast. For the uninitiated, Cal Park Bros is the podcast to hear. We are a weekly podcast for fans of sports, current events, and entertainment. And as always, we are your hosts, Terrence and Jason. And every single Thursday, we come to you with a brand new episode where we discuss the current events of the day, sports, and the athletes we love. And even some of the ones we loathe. No matter the topic, you can expect a brutally honest and fun exchange of snark while learning through the lens of our 30 years of friendship that originated in Calumet Park, Illinois. And folks, for more Cal Park Bros content, make sure you connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok under the handle Cal Park Bros or Cal Park Bros Podcast for more, more behind the scenes of the show and just to engage with us every single day. But do not forget that the Cal Park Bros Podcast is available to listen and subscribe for free wherever you, your friends, your neighbors, your folks, your people, everybody you know, listens to podcasts. Like us, love us, share us, follow us. And folks, if you like us, hell, why wouldn't you? Folks, like Terrence said earlier, we are the podcast to hear and watch. So make sure you're living it, loving it, and doing it. Okay, let's get into it. Um, as Jason mentioned, we had a gang of laughs uh, prior to uh, kicking off the show. And that's because mainly, ain't a lot of shit to laugh about this week. Um, and I, maybe I picked a good time to kind of... Um, go on Facebook hiatus <laughs> uh, because I was paying attention to the news cycle. This, this played out fairly predictably, predictably with Roe versus Wade. Okay. The, the writing has been on the wall pretty much since Donald Trump took office with every retiring judge, the new judge, tries to give the implication that, oh, no, I would never overturn Roe v. Wade, ignoring the fact their entire, you know, history as a judge says otherwise, that they were absolutely going to vote for that sort of thing. All these conservative-ass judges, Donald Trump put into office, and I know this segment is really about Roe v. Wade, um, and I feel like us as a country, that's typically all we actually pay attention to, ignoring the fact there's a lot of other federal judges that Donald Trump got to a point, or any president gets to a point, for that matter. But you don't really hear about that, because it hasn't doesn't have the same level of, uh, doesn't have the same weight. And this played out fairly predictably. Um, it was only a matter of time before this 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 current currently constructed Supreme Court finally removed the veil and said, "Okay, Roe v. Wade's out, out of here. It's toast." And that's fifty years of basically uh, protection, um, fed, federal protection, mind you, uh, of a right to to an abortion. And I know, guys, that gals, non, non-binary, that, why, yes, you do yet have two motherfuckers with a penis, yet again, offering their two cents on this. But we're, I, I say we, I'm approaching this from the perspective of, yes, we know that. And I'd almost rather approach it from the perspective of, of course this happened. All the signs were there that it was going to happen. Now what? <laughs> Um, some of my preliminary thoughts, Jason. What, what, do you, what are your, some of your feelings? So the first thing I, I do want to point out to everybody, because I feel like initially people might not have been aware, some maybe more aware now. But what the Supreme Court did, they didn't ban abortions themselves. They basically, essentially, long story short of it, put it back in the hands of each individual states. Like Terrence loved to say, states rights, states rights, you know. So basically, each individual state now can make their own decisions about what they choose to do for their state. And not surprisingly, like, like Terrence said, 
shortly after the news came out that they, you know, put it back in the hands of the states, several states started to jump into action to say, okay, now we now that we can, we're going to look into taking action to do this. So some states already had some stuff in place. Some, you know, may not decide to do anything. Um, and that's really, really what's going to be really interesting because I believe over half the states in the in the in the nation either are going to have uh, bans already in place or they're looking to do something in the future to have it done. I think 26 states in total, I believe, is what the number was. So a little more than half. Um, just for perspective, Illinois, Blagojevich has already said they have no plans at all on ever placing any restrictions on abortion. You said Indian- Blagojevich, but I'm pretty sure you meant Pritzker. Yeah. My bad, folks. You know, you know what it is. Yeah, Pritzker. Exactly. Indiana is a different situation, different story. They are going to move forward with it. Nothing in place yet. And we can, I can go more into about what states are doing what, but it's and it's very interesting what each state has decided in regards to the ones that already have something in place. But that's also going to be possibly a problem, too, because basically you're almost going to have, well, I wouldn't say 50 different states having 50 different laws and rules in place for whatever they're going to do, whether whether you allow it or not, or they ban it, but ban it up to a certain time frame is it only allowed for for this allowed for that whatever it is and we're gonna see continue to see people traveling out of state to get their abortions done so and that's another point i have to say that this isn't going to stop people from getting abort- abortions legally or otherwise and unfortunately i have to say the otherwise is of course going to be the concern because if you live in a state where it's banned and aren't able or don't want to travel out of state to get one what are you going to do now, obviously, it's not going to be, I'm going to say this for everybody, but there are going to be, be, uh, be people who seek out the, we'll say, not legal abortions, but the unsafe ones, those back alley doctors, as they say, you know. Now, I, I, so that's a concern. Well, obviously, well, each state have to keep an eye on that and be aware of what they're going to do. But those are kind of my initial thoughts there. And obviously, all the protests, which you, you knew were going to happen. Um. And I say protest, I mean I mean protest, folks, when it comes to people out there voicing their opinions, not doing anything illegal, whatnot. I know there's a certain side of the political specter that want to put all of it on, you know, on the other side. But one other thing, and I'll let you go, jump back in, that I found really interesting is that the response that I saw from social media, now when I say social media, I mean the people that I actually know, the women. And when I say women, I mean women on both sides of the political spectrum, those who vote one way, those who vote another. I surprisingly didn't see any females in support of this. Now, obviously, we know there are plenty. Yeah, there's many women out there who are, which is what it is. And I, I pretty much know why. But I was just very surprised at that, that in the people that I know, the hundreds of people that I know, hundreds of women that I know on both political sides, none of them. We're in favor of this, you know. So those are my initial thoughts, and I have several more. But I want to hear what else you got to say. Um, well, w- w- one thing I thought of is that so basically having fifty different answers to how how um, the a woman's right works out so well, right? Because it works out so well for gun control, right? I mean, obviously, Indiana's answer to uh, to uh, gun control does you know does wonders for what's going on in Illinois, right? Well, I mean that that goes in what I, what I was saying too. People are going to travel out of state to get abortions, and if you're in Indiana or the other states around Illinois that I'm going to go into later, easy trip to Illinois, boom, and you're good. So I mean, people are going to get them no matter what. So it's, it's not going to happen in that state. Yeah, Jason, the, the, I think what a lot of proponents of abortion rights in the first place is that the whole idea is to make it as difficult as possible for women to get the procedure um, and then taking into account that many women who who do who may be of modest means means, you know, we're not talking about someone who may have ample access to resources, you know, can take a week off 
fly out to one to one of the few states and where 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 it's still legal, one hundred percent. We're talking about people that might be struggling financially. They may not want to have a child for financial reasons. Hell, if somebody is somebody who's about to put put a kid through college, I, I, I get the financial impact. What well, you know, you know, and the 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 oppose the opposers of abortion are so fixated on the right to life, but they don't want. They're not gonna step in and say, "Okay, I'll take care of that baby. I'm that baby's daddy." Shout out to life. I knew you were gonna say that. Or as Chris Rock would say, they want them to grow up so that we can kill them. You know, the whole right to life campaign, it's a little shaky for me. If you're if you're pro-life, fantastic. No one's trying to say that you can't take your baby to term. You trying to have a say over every damn body. Which makes you just as bad as the feds. Now, Jason, you had mentioned um, something about the logistics of the states in which you you can still get an abortion. Yeah, before going to that, I, I want to mention one thing. You mentioned about right to life and stuff like that. One of my uh, friends did mention a very interesting point. <clears throat> is that when it comes to, and I know it's different aspects, but that they mentioned that when it comes to filing your taxes, you can't claim an unborn child born unborn child because the IRS says you can't do that because it's not a person. But yet, you know, right to life. Okay. And then also too, I hearken back again, hearken to people that always say, what laws do we have that govern men's reproductive situations with their bodies? Which are basically none. Again, we'll go more than that later or some other time, but but to answer your question, yes. So as of right now, there are 20 states that it's pro- projected that they're, they don't have anything in place for restrictions on abortion, and they're not going to. Again, I mentioned Illinois is one of them. You can imagine some of the other ones, California, Washington, uh, Oregon as well, uh, Montana, shockingly, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, so kind of in that area there. Really where you see the big concentration of states to where – Either it's banned now or they're going to have a band, as you can imagine, is that southeast corner and kind of coming up to like Kentucky and stuff like that. Um, and like you mentioned, as far as traveling out of, out of, out of state to get an, an abortion, if you're going to do that, if you're in those states, you're really going to be far away from a state where you can get it. So I ag- agree with you, what you're saying, that that's going to be an op- not an option for many women because financially and logistically, it's just not possible. Yeah, from Indiana, you can always just drive to Illinois if, if you wanted to. That might make it easier. But even still, it's not a realistic possibility for you know some women if you can't get it done in your locale. Which was the now, point. That was the whole premise of this anyway, is to make well, it as difficult as possible uh, to, to get this sort of care. Well, that's the premise of each state. I, I'm not going to put that on the premise of the, the Supreme Court because that's a different pers- you know, perspective. but. So there are, as of right now, 13 states, as of right now, that already have a ban. 13. Again, we can imagine what those are. But of those 13, I'll go ahead and name them off. Alabama, Arkansas, Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, West Virginia, Wisconsin. And even though these last two are kind of on hold due to lawsuits, Louisiana and Utah. All those states mention specifically that there are no exceptions for rape or incest. All the states except for West Virginia, don't mention anything about exceptions for issues with the baby itself. Like the baby is going to have life complicating issues. West Virginia is only one of those that mentioned that, that you, okay, in that situation, you can get one in that situation. All the rest of them say only in cases of complications, life threatening issues with the pregnant person. Right. And, and I believe Utah was the only one that had exceptions for um, rape, and in, rape and incest. So, so very restrictive. But I want to go a little further with two states in particular, Texas and Alabama. I mentioned those are the ones that actually have it banned. But we haven't talked about the punishments that these states have 
people that get abortions. Now, some of them may range for typically out to five years, 10 years, some 15. But Alabama and Texas, they both have felony, it's a felony, and punishment up to up to 99 years in prison. So basically life. Because you got an abortion. So there's that there. Uh, and then also, too, like I mentioned earlier, each state's going to have its own restrictions when it comes to the time frame you have to get one. Uh, some states it's six weeks, some it's 15, you know, some it's 10, 5, 20, whatever, maybe. I think what a lot of conversations I've had with women is, is that the time frame that, that's not, whether what's not taken uh, in consideration is the time frame that can happen before a woman even knows she's even pregnant in the first place. Because many women have said that I didn't know I was pregnant until week four, week six, potentially as well. And if you're in a state that only has it cut off at six weeks, guess what? You're screwed. Or even if you find out in week two, week three, week four, even, most places you're not going to be able to get an abortion immediately. But again, doesn't matter because you had that cut off unless you have one of the exceptions that's allowed in your state. So, and then, like I said, those, those are 13. There's 13 others that are, are getting bans in place probably in the next 30 days. And that's what put it at, at that 26 number I mentioned earlier. That So more than half of the states in the country are going to have a ban of some sort. Um, now, there are some states that are still uncertain, so you may be able to add you know another 5 or 10 to that. And they may be looking more like 75%-ish. So, um, so I agree with you. Um, each state's probably, uh, well, I don't want to say they're trying to make it difficult for people. I'm sure they have more probably sinister reasons for that, we'll say. Uh, but one thing I will say that, which whether it's ill-founded or not, definitely if, I'll say this, and I, I really don't care if I get in trouble for it, that essentially that if a reason for, for doing this has anything to do with religion, I think your desires for this are definitely misguided because they should politics and religion when it comes to deciding the fate, we'll say, of the people, most of which don't have a religion because they don't want to subscribe to it, shouldn't come into play. I know people are going to say, well, this isn't about religion. It's about lives of babies, blah, blah, blah. Well, so then, like I said before about the male body, should we also outlaw vasectomies? Since that's potential for life too. Just putting it out there. Again, just my opinion, not saying that's the opinion of Terrence. That's the opinion of one Jason Ross of the Galpart Bros. I'm just dude, saying that. Dude, if if we even I'm trying I can't even think of something that's on par with the level of overreach in vaginas that there are that could even come close to penises. We we just we just don't do it. We don't, we don't, we don't. We don't give directives on what men can do with penises in America the way we do with vaginas in this society. We just don't. Well, well, we're not really technically talking about penises per se. It's really just sperm, right? So, but the point is, I was saying that, and I think you get it. I'm just saying that if 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 if, if life is all you know, it's all about life and the potential for life. Should we not also allow vasectomies? Because that sperm, is it not potential for life? Does the sperm not need an egg to get to that embryo in the woman's stomach? Yes. So so should we now expect the Supreme Court to do that? Of course not. So <clears throat> I, I just find that interesting. I mean, obviously, you and I aren't females. We don't identify as females. So but I, that is a very interesting point. While we're doing all this for abortions and because of right to life and all that stuff like that, but where's the law or whatever for vasectomies. Right to life. Yeah. Or a right to lie. Sperm lives matter. No comment. Well, folks, that concludes our first segment on a yet spirited segment on Cal Fire Bros. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about the 50th anniversary of Title IX.